Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench, and today we'll start a new project. I think this is going to span uh, a few parts because I'm going to break this down into shorter videos, or at least I'm going to try. Now, this is a project that jumped to the front of the pile. I just picked it up at Sprue Brothers. It was one of their lightning deals. I picked up uh, Edward's boxing of the Zvezda Hind uh, in Czech and Slovak service. It's the Zvezda kit with a bunch of Edward's uh, extras included. I got this as a lightning deal for $45. And when you see all the stuff you get in the box, it's an unbelievable value. Okay, we're gonna take a look at what's in the box. We're gonna talk a little bit about the, the kit itself, which isn't what you know. I think a lot of us expected from Zvezda, a Russian company doing a kit of a Russian helicopter, you know, using modern tooling. Again, uh, I'll have a few words to say about that when we get to it. Uh, before we jump in, uh, first of all, thanks for watching. You're watching right now, you're doing the channel uh, a solid. I really appreciate it. Uh, the big thanks goes to my channel members. As always, guys, thank you for being channel members. If you want to support the channel, if you look down below, if you're watching this on a computer, you'll see a button that says join. You hit that button, it's uh, $1.99 US a month, uh, goes towards running the channel, helps pay for you know supplies and stuff. And I, I don't do Patreon or any of that other stuff. Uh, this is the only thing I do, it's the most basic uh, way that you can support the channel outside of subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing as well. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and be notified every time I put out a new video. So without further ado, how about we jump in, let's pop the box open and take a look at what's in. All right, so I can't exactly fit the whole box into the, uh, into the frame. This is the best I can do. And it's in 148 scale. So the first thing you see is you get this, this really nice book. Let me take the box out of the way. And uh, it's all in Czech. Uh, herbata, if I'm saying that right, is the Czech word for hunchback. And as you go through this book, it's 70 pages and it's full of, you don't have to read Czech to appreciate, all the photographs and uh, diagrams that are in here. There are profiles of numerous hinds and the pictures are terrific and I've kinda, I kinda broke the spine of the book. My bad. But there's pictures in here of all these different versions and uh, well worth this alone. I mean, if you could get a, uh, you know, what you pay for reference books, this would be this would be worth, to me, this would be worth 20 bucks easily. I'd pay 20 bucks for all these pictures and diagrams and profiles. Then you got the instructions and, you know, standard Ed Award instructions give you all the different stuff. The profiles, you get the profile on the box, it's, uh, a Hind D from uh, 1995. Uh, then to me, this is the classic. Uh, paint job you find on a standard hind. This one's from 92. Then you get the uh, subdued uh, paint job, 97. Another one with the uh, with the green and, and tan. Then you get, this is, I think that this is considered the NATO compliant camouflage and markings. Uh, this is the one, I actually saw this helicopter at the museum in, uh, in Prague. If you haven't seen that video, there's a link right here to it, okay? And then you get the earlier version of that Tiger Camo from 94. This one, the front half is just gray, and you get the tail. The other one is uh, multicolor gray. Then you get uh, another of the uh, NATO compliant camo, and then you have a, you finish up with a Slovak helicopter here. And then the rest of it is stenciling and stenciling and stenciling. They give you this little box of stuff. The I bought the resin wheels when I ordered the helicopter. I figured you couldn't go wrong with that. 
There's a bunch of resin anti-tank missiles and their mounts to go on the wings. And then there's some 3D printed stuff in here. So the 3D printed stuff is uh, some exhausts, exhaust shrouds, I guess. Uh, the I think this is the targeting pod for the, the nose. Now let's take a look, we'll take a closer look at the at the kit itself the I'm gonna be very honest with you the panel lines that do exist on the fuselage are really faint I've started to rescribe them on this one so you can you can see where the lines are and I've I've rescribed them and I, I put some black uh, Tamiya panel line wash into them just so I can see them when I work on it. Uh, and you know what, I understand some people prefer faint panel lines, but these are so faint that in some places, like especially over here, on these curved surfaces, they almost disappear. You can see where on the bottom here, if I can get that. See the, there's two lines that come across the lower fuselage and they they almost fade out here. I haven't rescribed these. So the whole kit's going to basically need rescribing just to have, you know, panel lines that you can apply a wash to, you know, I would prefer. And the other thing you're going to notice is that there's absolutely no riveting on here, positive or negative. And I I can't understand that because this this helicopter is literally covered in visible rivets. And I, I'm, I'll put a couple of pictures in here so you can see it. I, I just, you know, they, from what I've read on lines, Vesda claim the reason they don't have rivets is that it would have taken longer and the kit would have been more expensive. But what else would you do? I mean, you could have at least done basic negative riveting so that it would have been there. So this will all get re-riveted and I'll show you my solution for the rivets at the end. The clear parts are in a baggie. Very good. And then when we get to, you know, more of the faint uh, panel lines and the no riveting. And then the other thing you're going to see is, here's the instrument panel. The instrument panels are flat and devoid of any detail whatsoever. All they give you, they, the Zvesta kit itself gives you decals for that, which seems a little ridiculous to me. There's there's no detail at all on these. Edward gives you their, I guess it's their Lepto, which is their flat photo etch, but with the clear parts, the gauges have a little bit of surface to them you can see you can see the reflection so they did their best to make the flat gauges have some kind of realistic gauge appearance and this was great before 3d instrument panels came out uh, seat belts and restraints there they give you paint masks then they give you some photo etch, what do you call it, for some of the instrument panels, some more of the cockpit detail. I think this is supposed to be padding that gets installed around the uh, canopies. Decals, and I think these are going to be their new style of decal. Yeah, these are their new style. You can tell because there's, it, you can see this kind of jagged, clear around each decal so once these decals go on you're supposed to be able to uh, wait 24 hours and then peel off the clear on the on the front of them and then I sprang for this because why wouldn't you it's the Quinta Studios 3d instruments I'm gonna be honest I think the these were excessively priced this was uh, I want to say I paid like 24 bucks for these and that was the cheapest price I could find and I think that was cheaper than 
uh, Sprue Brothers, if I'm right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, you get seat belts and instrument panels, and that's about it. And this is going to be my solution for the rivets. These are rivet decals from Micromark. Uh, with the shipping, I paid like 24 bucks for these. You get two sheets of these. The surface area where the actual rivets and stuff are is about six, six by nine and a half. For my purposes, I think these will work fine and uh, hopefully it'll be a good project and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. So let's jump in. We'll go step by step. I don't think I'm going to get crazy and do this outside of the instructions. So let's take a look. Alright, I'm a bit of a slow learner. I discovered that PE63, this piece of photo etch here, that's actually the headrest of the pilot folded back. I guess it can unlock so that he can turn around and communicate with the people in the cabin. I'll show you the, the seat. I couldn't fold photo etch on, on, the, uh, on camera to save myself, so... You wind up putting all these brackets on the back here. The headrest is folded back. Uh, I think you're probably not even going to see most of this when it's all done. So there's the pilot seat. I've got this much of the cockpit assembled. Here's the part of the cockpit I've got done already. Uh, I attached the floor for the cabin per the instructions. Uh, I've sanded that. I'm going to probably go back and sand a little more, kind of clean it up. I hadn't attached the other wall yet because Edward tells you in step three to attach this wall to this side of the cockpit and then like on the next page, like about four steps later, they're like, oh, by the way, you have to put this, uh, you have to bend this photo etch and install it as well as this one. Uh, the other stuff I'm leaving off until I paint. So this just has to get installed here. I can't see where I'm going to do much better than this. Uh, I hate photo etch with a passion. And uh, you can kind of see here those petals. Ah, those pedals. I had, to, I had to cut this lever out. I had installed the lever, if you go back and look, and then realized I had to put that photo etch floor in. So I cut it out. I installed the floors. The floors fit perfectly, uh, but, oh, man, I just don't have the patience for these pedals. I'm honest. Honestly, 
I put the bottom parts of the pedals in. I'm not putting the foot straps in. So uh, that's as much as I'm doing with the pedals. You're not going to see them once the instrument panel's in. So I'm not going to cry over it. I've got one more piece of unpainted photo etch to install on top of this. Here's the cockpit, basic cockpit assembled in the cabin floor. This is all through page four. I've gone in, I've done the, what I interpret as the basic painting. The cockpit green, I used MIGS interior turquoise green. This gray in the cabin area and stuff, that's M uh, MRP. Uh, I'll tell you what it is when I look at it again. And then the black is just, uh, that's the primer, that's the Mr. Servicer Black. Wasn't too crazy about this photo etch here, but it's in. I used flat aluminum from Tammy to dry brush the floor and the front and the back. Nothing crazy. And the photo etch pedals are hanging in by a hand. So that'll do it for the cockpit assembly. Pretty happy with that. Uh, some of the details were a little fiddly, but everything came together at the end. We got that together. Everything's painted. Put a wash over everything to bring out the details a little. And I haven't done a wash up here. This will be the engine bay. Uh, next episode, we'll do the engines. We'll get that assembled and we'll get that all washed so it looks like, you know, a little bit more detailed, all right? 
that'll do it for today. Thanks again to my channel members. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. I appreciate your support. Uh, we're approaching 2,100 uh, subscribers at this point. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down by all means. And leave me a comment down below uh, if you so like. Let me know what you thought of it. And uh, we'll see you for the next episode, okay? So take care and stay well. See you next time.